In this video, we're going to look at the Epifan Pro Nano, which is a two input encoder streaming device from Epifan. And we're going to look at two use case scenarios. One is lecture capture, where we combine two signals into a single signal to, uh, to show, say, PowerPoint and video and stream and record that. And also just as a pure streamer, where you in input one input and then just stream that. So those are the two use cases. The product costs about $1,500, so it's affordable enough to use as a standalone encoder, particularly because it's got a, a nice LCD monitor that gives you the confidence you need to understand that you're actually streaming video as opposed to just you know the red dot flashing, which always kind of leaves you wondering whether or not it's working or not. So we're going to look at the backside, and that's going to tell us about the I.O. We're going to look at the front side controls a bit, and then we're going to look at how to control the unit via software. So let's jump into the hardware, which I'm going to do this way because the unit's hooked up and I don't want to take it down. Starting from the left, we see the power supply. Next is the USB port. And the USB port is for connecting a hard drive or uploading images from a thumb drive. We see the HDMI out. That is a program out, so that lets you put up an HDMI monitor to show what's actually being streamed or recorded. Next up is an Ethernet port, and that is a power over Ethernet port. So if you have a power over Ethernet compatible switch, you can power the unit that way. There's the HDSDI input, uh, an HDMI throughput connector. And what that does is just display the HDMI input in real time. So if you're in a classroom or you're in an auditorium and you want to display that, you can do that in real time. Then we see the HDMI input itself, and then four audio jacks. We see two mic level RCA jacks, and then we see two XLR jacks. These are line level devices that don't supply phantom power, so you can't power a microphone with them. They're, they're basically provided to connect to a, a soundboard in your conference room or auditorium. Okay, moving to the front, we've got a live picture here. This is a headphone jack, which is always appreciated. This is the SD card slot where videos are recorded. Note that this card is formatted for the Linux operating system, so you can't take it out and read it in a Windows or Mac computer. There's a very, very simple way to get your video files, which I'll show you in a moment. Here's the confidence monitor. For this particular test today, I'm inputting HDMI output from a notebook, but I'm using an HDMI to HDSDI converter to get it into this unit. So that's the PowerPoint slide you see here, and this talking head unit is coming in through HDMI. These are the controls to control the menu options. We'll look at those in a second. And here's where you press record or stream to start the unit if you don't have a computer connection. One of the cool things about the unit is it makes it very easy to get connected. You click here to activate the menu, come down to system, come down to network, and then you see the IP address that you can connect to via any computer that's on the same network. So that's how you connect to and control the unit. Again, you can also control it via these switches here, but you're going to have to do some setup in the software, which we're going to look at right now. And you access the software via browser, so it's very simple, and you can do it from any device that's browser compatible. So now let's look at the software. The Epifan is a single channel system, which means it can output one channel, and you can combine two signals into that, but it's one channel out. And you control everything that happens within that channel via these controls, which we'll go through one at a time in a moment. Now here's how you control the signals that are coming in. So if you wanted to scale the signals or adjust the signals in some way, you do that here. And these are the configuration options that you're typically going to adjust. Automatic file upload allows you to upload the file that you're recording automatically once it's done recording. Epifan Cloud connects the unit to the cloud, which, which is a, a cloud service offered by Epifan that lets you control multiple units. That's a lot of value add for such an inexpensive encoder. You can connect to a CMS. You can configure a SD card, attach an external S, uh, USB drive, connect to these devices. And maintenance down here is nice. This gives you the ability to save off configuration. So if you set up a configuration like the one we'll be looking at in a moment, you can very easily save it off, including the uh, input positioning for the two input feeds, which audio you're selecting, recording and streaming configuration. So you can, you can save those and then retrieve those and use them again at a later point. But most of the work that you're going to do is, is done up here in the channel. And 
What we're seeing here is the status screen. And this unit can stream internally on a network. Any device that's inside the firewall should be able to see these streams, which occur in real time. I'll show you how to configure those in a moment. And we can click this, and then this is the stream that we're producing right now. And again, we're not streaming to YouTube or any similar service. We're simply sending this to devices that are on the internal network. Well, let's go back. So this is the status screen, and currently we're sending out these streams, and you'll see how those are configured in a moment. Here's the layout screen, and this is where you set up your combined presentation. So this is the HDMI output from the notebook coming in via HDSDI and the HDMI to HDSDI converter, and this is the HDMI video itself. And I set up this presentation down here. I loaded an image originally through the USB port on the front, and then I stored it into system memory. This is the SDI image here. This is the HDMI image here. You can also create simple text that's up here, and here's how you choose the audio source. The Perl Nano is a single encoder, so whichever settings you set here in the encoding tab are used for both recording and streaming. So in this case, we're recording on a different device, but if you wanted to record a presentation and stream it, you'd probably have to set this to the, the four to six megabit per second range. If you were just recording, maybe you could go eight to 10 megabits per second because you didn't have to get it out of the building. This is any metadata that you want to go out with the signal that you're streaming. And here's where you set up different streaming output points. And these are the two streams that I talked about a moment ago. These are the internal streams, which can be RTSP or HLS. And here's the stream configuration we're currently streaming to, which is to YouTube. That's this guy over here. And I let it run overnight. Here is pretty simple controls that if you've streamed before, you know what they are. You copy the URL in, you copy the stream name in, and then you set your username and password. Click Apply, and then the Stream button appears here, and that's how you start streaming. You can support multiple output streams if you have the sufficient bandwidth. And one of the great strengths of the Nano is the ability to support all these outbound protocols. So if you wanted to set up another stream, to say Facebook or wherever, this is how we would do it. And then here's the recording screen that I talked about a few moments ago. To start the recording, you press here or press the button on the front of the unit. And one of the great things about Nano is because it's got this HTML interface, you can go to any computer on the internal network and play these video files that you've recorded. And this is one recorded from yesterday. Or you can download the file. And this is a really simple way to download a Windows or Mac compatible MP4 file. So here we're showing how we combine two signals into a single stream. What if you want to use the unit solely as an encoder? And what we'd have to do is a couple things. Here we go back to HDMI, and I scaled this to a 640 by 360 image to fit it into the presentation we just saw a moment ago. So now I want to lose that, apply. So now it's not scaled. And then I go back to layout here, and I'm going to delete all these, and then choose as a video source my HDMI input, which is here, and then choose HDMI audio as well. And now basically this is going to function as a standalone encoder. And once I save this, this becomes what the unit is going to stream and or record, and we can see that that's reflected on the front of the unit itself here. So that's the Perl Nano. Now you know what it is, what it does, and how to run it. At $1,500, it's, you know, it's on the expensive side for a single encoder, but I think the LCD panel gives you a lot of good confidence that you're actually streaming what you think you're streaming, while the, the extensive format support makes it valuable for anybody who wants to go outside the typical RTMP push type scenario.